It's all right, spool me. Getting spooled. What's up, YouTube? Tom's got it right. Turn that Pokemon crap off. We spent two days at Wachaprig, and we had a great time there. Beautiful weather. Uh, the community there is awesome. Uh, they have a great little inn there, which has the title, Flounder Capital of the World. And this place is the Flounder Capital. If you want to catch some great flounder, limit out. This is the place to go. Really far, but rewarding. I think we only got two Keeper Flounders because we came on an off day. Big fail on D-Pack right there. Mental note, do not try to land a f any fish and, le and then take it out the net on the upper deck there. Fish will get out. Destroys the purpose of using a net if that's what you're gonna do. I have a great video here of me catching a 35 pound Flounder. 35? No biggest lie. This was a 50 pound stingray around, give or take. Uh, using a lose Mach 2 and... 35 inch flounder, let's go! <laughs> not, not a 35 inch flounder. So, I was really surprised that lose Mach 2 uh, had some great backbone on the rod actually. This is like probably a $150 setup. I think it's like $100 for the reel. Uh, it's the 20, I think the lose Mach 1 won the 2017 or 2016 iCast award. So I was kind of skeptical in getting to the Mach 2, but it has some great grip on the handle uh, and the knob. So I have a 30 pound Power Pro braid on it. So I, I'll be able to pull in most fish uh, to my knowledge without it's failing on me. That's the last thing you want. You you don't want a fish or the line to fail on you. What if it's a rockfish? So it was not a rockfish. I was just <laughs> hyping myself yeah, up to believe it was something that's not. You know, it's what fishermen do on a daily basis. They lie to themselves. No, they don't. They don't lie to themselves. I retract that. And pulling in this stingray. I mean, this thing was spooling it. This was probably destroyed my drag for the most part. A bit here and ended up having to use my index finger like in yeah, order to good. bring in as much line I wasn't trying to put my thumb on it because you will burn your thumb you don't want to put your thumb there so I had a uh, finger guard on my index finger for my spinning rod that I had there and I was using it by the end of the day right, I had a Ooh. hole and I had to throw the finger finger guard out at the end of the day Big shout out to Tom Yu. Oh, it's a ray. Yeah, I brought it. In. I brought the ray in, and he was able to cut the line. Yeah. I mean, that's some. He risked his life to do that, you know. It's, it's a... He risked his life because you never know these rays. He might have a a stinger, a venomous stinger, poisonous, and you do not want to get near that tail. Because um, Steve Irwin unfortunately passed away, you know, from getting stung by stingray so you never want to underestimate these animals it can be very dangerous and it's the time it's the day you underestimate them is when they'll get you so big shout out to Tom for helping me out cut my uh, cut my mono off my leader and at the end of the video I'm gonna show you the setup uh, for how we call flounder it's just a three-way swivel which has a hooker a hooker Red one. It has a sinker and a hook.
So two big things that I got, or three big things I took away from this trip was, um, well not what I took away, but just to reiterate uh, how to flounder fish. So you gotta be in the strike zone, you have to be drifting. Drifting is the most successful. If you're gonna be stagnant, uh, you gotta be casting different angles and different distance every time. It's about covering ground. That's major key, cover ground. So, <clears throat> we did anchor because most of these flounders are being caught in less than 10 feet of water, so... At one point we even just docked at shore and started casting from shore and Who caught a couple, a couple of flounder right from shore. And yeah. Yeah, it's close. Just caught tons of small flounder, but only ended up with two keeper. We also yeah, caught some croaker good. with some squid, uh, decent sized croaker, keeper for croaker to be exact. We also caught one short bluefish. But we, I, I attempted to use some bucktail and a teaser on it. It's, t it's tough. Uh, it's a grind. You, you gotta grind it out because just having a minnow on there is very easy because these okay, minnows are very active. They, I mean, they you put it in the water and you know when a flounder is chasing that these minnows start acting up, start running around like when you're live lining. And it's harder to tell when you're using gulp, just kind of jigging it and they might hit it, they might not commit. Uh, another big thing, sometimes the flounder will commit, they'll actually just swallow the minnow or they'll end the hook and whoa, 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 Brandon, when that happens Brandon, it just takes away from the fishing time so when they commit you want to set the hook as quick as possible but when there's days right here this is a prime example I prematurely try to set the hook and I actually pull the minnow straight out the mouth of the flounder so in this case Flounder, the minnow comes up half eaten. Uh, today was one of those days where they just don't commit. When they, when you get a hit, just stop oh, right man. there, let the minnow eat it for about three seconds, and then set the hook. They won't swallow it. Um, other days, they'll just go right for it, and they'll you'll end up with a gut hook every time. So you just have to kind of tell, feel it out for the first couple of flounders, and then go from there. So here's a video of uh, I'm using a, a GI jig, just a simple striped bass jig actually, but it has a big eye, and I throw a minnow on there, and I'm just kind of jigging it along, and the minnow are just act, you know, giving tons of action. These are some lively minnow, like acrobatic minnow out here. So just threw a minnow on there and foul hooked the flounder. The minnow was still alive, so I ended up reusing it, and never foul hooked the flounder, but this is a first, and that one that ended up being a short, but still measured it and released it safely. So Brandon with a keeper flounder, right here we were just drifting in 5 foot of water, and this was exactly a 16 and a half, so... Some good footage and big shout out to Brandon. Um, Brandon was new to fishing, so he's kind of learning himself. Tom has a wealth of knowledge, and I've just been learning from him uh, past year and a half. And we've been going out, and I'm just learning every time we go out. You know, refining the art. So, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to subscribe. I'm not going to be running ever any ads ever uh, I just plan to use this as 
my personal reference and just an educational tool for others just to see kind of what's going on you know what, what are people catching like relative to where I am so thanks for watching guys and um, I'm just gonna show you a clip at the end of the video where it just shows the three-way swivel and the hook and sinker so enjoy